Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, we're all calibrated now. A few cool things have happened since the last music marketing episode. We had a release of a song called Climb, which I co-wrote with a friend of mine from almost 10 years ago. Uh, we've both been on independent journeys of music. We finally wrote a song together, which was pretty cool. A second thing, the conversion campaign we launched to promote spring has been running for almost two months now. We've got some data on that and it seems to have made a big impact and I'll get into the details in a second. Third, we got a pretty cool reaction video from an influencer in the guitar space named Rudy Ayub. This has been serious for the past two minutes, bro. Where the fuck did Booty Gang come from? The feedback and I guess exposure, for lack of a better word, pretty positive. I'm gonna go over some of the things, some of the data from Spotify, YouTube, and some of the Facebook advertising campaigns that I'm running to kind of show what the uh, impact of all those events has been. So just starting first with our Facebook campaign. It's a conversion campaign. Since we've ran it, it spent a total of $660. $517 of it went to Spotify directly. And for the most part, I was promoting Spring. And if anyone's curious as to how that ad itself looks, the setup, I have another video outlining that strategy, but this ad went out to about 32,000 people and drove 826 clicks on the Hyped It link. Hypedit.com is basically the platform I use to help you decide if you're gonna go to Apple Music and listen to the song, or if you're gonna go to Spotify itself. You know, it's been pretty, awesome to see what it's been doing um, in the last 28 days let's see actually let's go back and go all the way to when the campaign first launched which was the 17th of may all the way to let's see today you can see in blue is how many link clicks people have made to go to either of those platforms apple or spotify and started off pretty strong in the beginning and eventually it started to taper off for the most part, when we look at the channels that that the users or traffic came from, it's been Instagram for the most part. And what's crazy, it has an 80% visit to link click ratio, which means 80% of the people that click the ad and get to this page are actually taking the next step and proceeding, which is pretty awesome. The typical drop off for every step and every page, if you're a person going through the internet and going through different steps is 20%. That's like the minimum drop off you'll see. And here I am hitting that like 20% drop off rate, which is like the best you can expect about. So this suggests that it's a really good ad and a really great song or part of the song that was sampled. But yeah, we got about 862 people listening to that or clicking that link. And if we see in the Spotify data, we've gone up from we're up to 796 listeners in the last 28 days, and but we're actually up to 522 followers. 522 followers, which is, I think the last time we made a video, we were at under 400. So we've gotten basically 30 to 40% more followers in the last couple months, which is great. In the last 28 days alone, 75 users. Um, but if we look straight at spring and kind of extend this out about 12 months, you can see right here is you know, without any promotion and this long hiatus I took, we were doing roughly like five to 10 listen or streams a day on spring. And then you could see right here when the ad starts kicking back on, uh, spending about 15 to $20 a day, we bump these numbers up to like 20 the first week, 40 is the second week. Then it starts compounding. We're getting up to 60 listeners. We end up dropping back down to the 40s when I kind of start playing around with the ad and testing new things. This growth has, has been very obvious since we've launched the ad. Now I don't even spend 20 bucks a day, I spend like five. And what's cool about this is, like if we're adding like 20 listeners a day, uh, we're retaining that same 20 throughout the week. So like first week's 20 a day, and then the second week's 40, and then it's up in the 60s. And so what's happening is those new listeners we're adding, they're sticking around to listen to the song. Um, it looks like on average, like four to five times per listener. And as we add more users on top, the listeners per day gets higher and higher because we still have that original group of listeners listening. And then we have this new group on top that's sticking around. And so 
we're seeing the listeners increase. And when we look at the streams, there's like some of these people, 60 of them are um, collectively streaming the song 160 times in a day sometimes. So that's it's really cool. But also, if I pay attention to the date frame of this next peak for spring, this kind of coincides with the release of that YouTube video by Rudy, which was his reaction to several different uh, guitarists' music, uh, including mine. And he released that video on the 27th. And you can see there's been a lot of interesting feedback about this song. But yeah, I got a lot of traffic coming over to my YouTube channel. I can see right here the peak on the 27th is when I start getting a lot of views on my channel. You can see watch time is peaking on my channel because people have moved from Rudy's reaction video, probably click the link in his uh, description to watch my actual music video for spring. The analytics of that have been pretty awesome to see right here, just taken off. Yeah, you could, it's just, it's night and day. You could, that peak has been incredible. That might coincide with this peak for spring where people started streaming it on Spotify as well. What's interesting here is I, I like to see how many people added this to their playlist in the last uh, week alone. The followers itself, here's the original growth that we saw in followers from the last video. We saw that's been flat all year because I did hardly any promoting. But then once I had the campaign running back up, we went from 372, right, to 522 at the making of this video. 40% increase in followers in just the last uh, month and a half. In May, the release of Climb. Climb is a collaboration between me and City of Lions. And you can see with that song, which came out on the 15th of May, we got 28 listeners. Um, when New Music Friday came out, we had the 98 listeners, which is the largest peak of listeners we've ever had for this song. And this song had no promotion other than a few stories here and there. I sent no money in advertising, which was probably not the move because what I should have done was, you know, time the release of the video with a promotion campaign and try to actually build momentum on this song. And so what probably would have happened, we came pretty close if we had actually put some money into this song beyond a marquee ad, we probably could have gotten this thing into Discover Weekly, which would have put it into a cycle of reaching new users and probably could have ranked pretty well because when we look at how many total listeners listen to this song, it's 679 and 131 saves came from that, which means We've got a, a save rate of about 19%. So 19% would probably put us in like maybe the top 40, top 40 or 50% in the algorithm. So, you know, anyone watching that's an artist, throw money at the song that just came out. It's not the song that has historically done well. If I sign into City of Lions uh, account, I can kind of see how the marquee campaign for it went. And a marquee ad is was available on his account because he's got like 3,000 followers, about 14,000 listeners a month. So he qualifies to actually use this feature, but we got to see what this campaign does. A marquee, which is supposed to go to his existing audience and, and it's like a little card that comes up and says like, hey, did you know we have a new release by City of Lions? Like, would you like to check it out? And you can click and that song will just start playing. That marquee ad for just $53 reached about 2,200 people and drove 152 clicks. We ended up getting 100 listeners if I was trying to evaluate how well this does, dollar per dollar, you know, 50 bucks to get 100 listeners, that's like a 50 cent listener, which is all right. Like, we're, that's what we're kind of getting on Facebook right now with completely new people. If Spotify wants this thing to be a bit more competitive, like for reaching an existing audience, it should be much cheaper to get somebody to listen to this. It shouldn't cost the same amount of money that it costs someone brand new. It should be like 20 cents a listener, but... You know, here's some benchmarks if you run your own uh, marquee ads. You know, we got a 5% conversion rate, which means of the people that saw the ad, um, 
5% of them actually clicked and listened to the music. We got three streams per listener from people that actually saw the campaign. You know, 50 cents to get a listener, but then also get three streams out of it for the most part. That brings the stream down to like 10 cents, uh, 15 cents a stream or so. We had 30% almost, 29% of those listeners actually save the song or add it to a playlist. One out of three. My rule of thumb is if you're doing one out of seven people, like you've got something good. You're doing one out of three, that's like, a whole new level of how well your song is performing. Is it resonating with the right people? So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the data for the marquee ad. Um, feel free to replay this video a few times and watch and compare your stats to this. Comment below if you've got even more awesome stats than this. We're at now a little under 800 monthly listeners. And so the next things we're gonna work on really testing out YouTube. And if I'm getting listeners for 50 cents on Facebook, can I potentially get 20 cent listeners on YouTube? Pretty much my goal. If I get a listener for 20 cents, there's something that could be said about potentially scaling this, this project into an actual full-fledged career that makes money and can supply basically enough resources to just make music full-time. For those of you uh, who don't know, I also do market and business consulting. So most of my money that pays for this, this studio and this, this whole space that we're in and this internet <laughs> that you're watching this on and this phone bill that's recording my voice is um, all paid for by marketing consulting and uh, a few investments here and there. Probably do the YouTube stuff and a big opportunity on Facebook ads that I haven't even tapped into yet is opening up the campaign itself to more, more countries. We're only doing the US and we're only doing spring, but if there's a way to like reach a more broader audience, which we've done in the past, that's backfired. But yeah, we should test that out because for the most part, I cannot get this campaign below 40 cents. Like one, the best day I've ever had was a 36 cent uh, listener on Facebook. So maybe if I open this up to more countries like Canada, Britain, Australia, could we potentially get this down to 20? We'll see. Thanks for sticking around and watching this journey. If you're interested in actually seeing my Facebook strategy, as it was, there's a video I will link somewhere. And if you're interested in hearing some of my music or listening to Climb, which just came out, I'll leave a link to that in the description. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.